Hello, my name is Sasha Privish, and today I would like to talk about Token Exchange, which is an uh, extension to the OAuth 2 RFC. And I would like to explain what it is and what it is used for. So first of all, a few highlights. Exchange one token type of one domain for other token in a different domain. So the main idea of this spec is to enable a client to um, exchange one token it already persists or owns and exchange that for a different one and um, I will show how this works. And uh, a typical case would be an external token that is uh, given to a client which is then exchanged for an internal token which you may use in between your backend services. And the spec um, introduces a new uh, OAuth grant type, which is this uh, long name here, URN, IETF, params, OAuth, grant type, token exchange. And I will show um, how this spec can be used and I will start with use cases. So let's say there's a client and you are um, running an authorization server and it has a an issuer value in this case it's the uh, authorization server which is issuer A and you've got an API gateway and the API gateway sits in front of a resource server and in addition you've got an authorization server which is used for internal authorizations and a typical scenario could be where the client is an, is an OAuth client and the authorization server issues a auth uh, access token and it may have a subject and maybe an email address but for example nothing like roles or other attributes of a user because the the authorization server doesn't want to expose that information to external clients so in those cases <clears throat> there may be a second server an internal one which is then able to translate an access token or a for that matter, a different token that is given to the API gateway um, to exchange this given token for one that is being enriched with roles or other attributes of a current user or even application. And this token then may be used internally against the resource server. And a typical flow would look like this. The client requests a token and um, the client uses the token against the API gateway. The API gateway does its typical validations. Um, the token has not expired. The token was issued um, for this domain, in this case, domain A. And um, before passing this token to the resource server, the, the API gateway has been configured to, to request a new token. It's going to do a token exchange. So it could be that it's uh, sending this access token that it received to this authorization server. The authorization server validates it, looks up the associated user and creates a new token with more details about this user. Returns it to the API gateway and the API gateway then forwards it to the resource server. And the resource server can now implement authorizations based on a user role based on a, a user age, has to be older than 21 or something like that. All kinds of information or maybe even internal groups this user belongs to. Um, all kinds of information that shouldn't be available outside of this area, of this internal area. Another use case would be that this client uses a, a token against a different domain, for example here, domain B. And the gateway in domain B receives the access token, which is here used, and realizes that it was issued by issuer A. But because this system doesn't understand token that were issued by domain A or issuer A, the gateway has to exchange it for a token of the issuer B, which is the instance or the authority that issues token for the domain B area. So this gateway 
takes this token, sends it off to the authorization server, and the authorization server issues a token back to the gateway, which is now made for domain B. And um, on a not so abstract view, this, for example, could be a, a SAML token that is passed in. It is exchanged for a token, um, like a JSON web token, that is then used internally here. So the main idea really is that uh, a client is able to use a given token and use a different one um, against a certain system. So an access token could be exchanged for a new access token, could be exchanged for a SAML token if all uh, available or required attributes are available. And a refresh token could be exchanged for an access token. It is really um, very open, the spec. It's um, mainly letting you define a common way for exchanging token. Okay, so how does it work? So there's the client and there's an authorization server which has a token endpoint and there's a resource server. And in this case, um, how it works is the client sends a post message to the token endpoint using the typical uh, content type. It includes client um, credentials if the client is a uh, confidential client. And there are three required parameters. One is the grant type, the uh, token exchange grant type. One is the subject token and one is the subject token type. So this is a very generic, um, or these are very generic parameters because the subject token could contain um, more or less any token, right? It could be an access token, refresh token, SAML token, whatever there is in uh, this specific domain. And the subject uh, token type tells the uh, authorization server what type of token it is. So therefore, these two parameters can be used for all kinds of tokens that exist. Then there are additional but optional parameters like the resource. The client could specify for which resource the token is being requested or in this case exchanged. So I colored it green so that uh, it's easier to follow. It would be for this resource. The audience would be a logical name for the resource, which is almost the same also over here. And uh, all of these parameters here allow the authorization server to make uh, decisions when processing this request, validating it, and issuing a new token. And then, of course, we have the uh, scope, which is the typical OAuth scope, and um, the type that is being requested. So if the subject token is a uh, let's say a SAML token, or if we stay in the context of OAuth, a refresh token, the requested token type could be an access token. And this again, right, is one parameter used with all kinds of token types that exist. And then we have an actor token, an actor token type, and these two are meant for a scenario where a relying party is gonna act as a subject or um, um, impersonates a subject. Okay, so this is the request and the response is a typical OAuth request. The only difference is that the uh, response includes the access token parameter, but in this case it's not necessarily a typical OAuth access token. In this case it's more like a container for the requested token type. So if the requested token type was a refresh token, the content will be a refresh token. If the requested token type was a SAML token, this will be a SAML token. And the name access token is used um, in order to make it easy for implementers to take on this, um, this spec. And then the issued token type will explain what type of content a client can find in this access token container. The token type down here is the bearer token, which is very typically, this is the case that the issued token 
can be used as is and the client does not need to prove, prove ownership once it is using it against a resource server. Then we have a list of granted scopes and a refresh token if this is applicable. The uh, spec specifies identifiers, token type identifiers. So the protocol includes the requested token type, subject token type, actor token type, issue token type, and they all take one of these values here and you see it's the typical um, auth token extension value, so to say. And then you've got the access token, refresh token, all kinds of token that may be requested. And as usual, this is a framework, so you may extend this for your own domain. Delegation versus impersonation. So what is explained in the um, spec is also the idea that in some scenarios, a uh, token exchange is done in order to act on behalf of a resource owner or act as a resource owner. In uh, the delegation, it is more or less like the resource owner um, is the subject of a token sent to resource server. And, and I'm sticking to these terms and this example because this is how it's specified in the uh, spec. So if you read it, yeah, it should be easier for you to, to relate to this, um, to this slide. So the resource server would exchange it and the uh, authorization server would issue a JSON web token. And this JSON web token may include a claim, which is act like actor. And uh, in this case, the token um, or the resource server is acting on behalf of the resource owner against this uh, backend service. If this is meant for impersonation, the JSON web token may include a claim which is called may act. And in this case, the resource server A is able to um, impersonate resource owner B, which makes resource server A the same as resource owner B. And it, a uh, typical scenario would be where a administrator is trying to um, reproduce an error that one of the end users may have. And in order, in order to do that, the administrator has to be able to, to simulate being this specific user. And this flow allows the administrator to do that and uh, it will, the system, the backend service will believe that the incoming request is made by resource owner B, although it is uh, the resource server A or an administrator. This is a very particular use case and uh, it is important that logging and authorizations are implemented so that not any one of a um, of a domain of a system or um, service or support engineer is able to simply impersonate a user. There has to be a special reason, and it has to be able to. Uh, it must be able to to review how um, this request led to the situation that one instance or one person, one server, is able to impersonate another one. Yeah, and that's it. Um, here's a link to the relevant specifications. This is the uh, token exchange, OAuth2, of course, OpenID Connect, and the JSON Web Token Spec. I hope this was useful for you. Please leave a comment, ask questions if you have any. Um, I'm also happy to hear what other types uh, or which other topics you would like to hear. Please let me know. and. Um, if you really like the videos or some others, um, consider buying me a coffee and please subscribe. Thank you. Have a good day.